so well. There I am, together with my windmill. Um, wow, you see it blinking here on stage. Um, the subject of today, dare do and innovate, is uh, what I do my life long, more or less. And I just discovered, I'm almost 50, and that's not a problem, that I'm wondering every day how things are going on. And uh, if you see uh, my title of today, I'm also a little bit scary, you know? And scary about what's going on at the moment, about how things will be and are connected towards each other. I built a windmill to show you a couple of simple ideas, and I want to share them with you, and I want to go interactive with this room, if you want to buy them, if they are benefiting for you. So one of the things that is puzzling me is we get 37 billion intelligent things online. Can you imagine? Who is happy with this? Come on, raise your hand. That's not a lot, guys. <laughs> Who is scared? A bit? So are a lot of neutral people here. You don't know? This is our world. Created. Wonderful. Every day I enjoy it. And every day on Earth, when I use my stuff, this was one of my first phones. Yeah. Can you imagine my first phone? And we were talking about Leonardo da Vinci, and now I'm flying with friends with my, how do you call it? My drone. So in this piece of art, you know, there is always something that's so interesting to share with you. And that's also my windmill. The windmill itself, you see here now, is not a friendly guy anymore. You know, there are a lot of stories around windmills in Holland, about that they are ugly and they are pol uh, horizon pollution. This is my second phone. Can you remember that you were walking with this phone in your backpack, in a way? And this is my, one of my new playing stuff, you know. I'm also busy with 3D printing, and as you know, it has a very potential thing. I, I made my mill, and partly of this mill is printed. It's interesting if you build a thing of carton with small lights, in a way. So I'm in a total new phase. We go from bits to atoms. They call it the third generation of Internet. And remember what I just shared with you about everything that will be connected. I'm part of this crowd. I'm part of this world, and I want to give you something back, in a way. But I'm also scary about things like deep mind and deep minding, you know. Who has a nest at home? Who is using the thing? How is it? Is it okay? Is it helping you in fulfilling your energy uh, wishes, in a way? Censoring. Are you aware of the plasters we get, that they can be hacked, and that someone can look into your body? Great, guys. Great. <laughs> so. Let's go a little bit interactive. This question, do you know what you were drinking this morning? Who knows what he was drinking this morning at breakfast? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and do you also know exactly what ingredients and values you gain from drinking it? Now, do you want to know it? Look at this. It's coming up in the market. We have some sound, please. Well, there is no sound. This is so amazing, guys. This is a thing you put in your drinks and it gives you all kind of information. <laughs> Who would buy this thing? It's connected to your smartphone. Uh, it's calling your doctor. Um, my personal trainer, Howard, will tell me, Mick, you went too far with drinking beers and those things. I visited the fabric of new cars. Also quite interesting. My windmill. And uh, who came with the car this morning? Okay, who came with the train? Oh, okay. Do you think that... Uh, and how many hours your car is built, in a way? What do you think? Come on, give me a response. Take a hybrid car like a Toyota. How many days it will be produced from the factory? Okay. You know what you can buy now? This amazing thing.
Applause, guys. This is amazing. 44 hours, and you have a car, a driving car. So when I was asked to do my TED talk, um, I was thinking, okay, if I'm looking at my history, you know, and my first phone, and my Nokia communicator, and all the things in life that are inspiring me and triggering me, I was aware of this journey. I'm in the middle of, we are in the middle of this journey. The first, the second, the third, and almost the fourth. And um, it's interesting what's around us. Um, I don't try to live in the perspective of fear and jealousy. Of course, I'm an innovator, I'm a creator. I share my thoughts every day with people around me to make my ideas better, also to realize it. And, um, but it's, it's quite, quite a lot, guys. It's quite a lot that's coming up. And um, there are also a couple of things that are puzzling my mind now for years that are around us. And uh, one of those questions is this one. And uh, everybody will visit once in his life, maybe, or more, a parking garage. You know, my father, my father is an architect, and uh, he learned me something about standards, about ISO standards, a world with standards. So do you have any idea why we have caulk lines in garage? Have you ever seen flexible parking places in the street where a light is beaming up when you bring your car there? And uh, like this? It's interesting that the light is making the place of the car. So you park your car, and the light is coming up, and the next is there, and the next is there, and the next is there. It's a quite simple idea, but it's telling something about my frustration too in realizing those windmills. Because with this idea, I'm on the road for years now. And nobody is buying it. So I gave it away for free. <laughs> yeah, to a company here in Maastricht, who is quite huge in parking. But they didn't want to talk with me about it. Who thinks this is a great idea? We have smaller cars. We have a lot of space, you know, here around us that's expensive. And all the things with retailers, etc. So let's go for this idea. I have another one. Oh, here, you can see it. You know, you can, you can bring the car to the exact place. You know, you can measure the car when it comes in. They know everything about your car, by the way. So small, small, big, big. I think it's an amazing idea. This question, also interesting. Why our standard is 220? If most of our electrics we need is less than 60%. <coughs> Of course, we have the fridge. We are consuming a lot of power, you know, my windmill is here. <laughs> so, if we bring in a new standard network in the house with low energy, it will save 130 million a year in Holland. Who wants that? Let's use that money for other things. Raise your hands. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So this is the story, this, these are simple ideas. So I, I, I really want you to help me after this TED talk. You know, it's, it seems that I'm a little bit frustrated in a way, but I'm now for 20, 25 years on the road with this kind of innovations. And my main question is why we have the 220, why there is not a flexible parking space, but why there is a can that's telling me that I'm drinking a beer. And I hope today that I will meet people here in TED that also can tell me why those things are not there and other things are there. Simple things, like the windmill. You know, from a historical perspective in Holland, when I was a young, young boy, I always loved windmills. And these guys are standing there. Of course, there's a discussion about their um, energy uh, production in, uh, with investments. But I said to myself, why not color those veins with polygram material that they colored like the sun, the sea, and the era surrounding? So a month ago, I was on a keynote of Sir Branson, and he was telling me a story about Necker Island, that he wanted to make it 100% sustainable with solar and with a mill. 
So, and also he was telling us about it's strange to put a mill into the sea. And I took an envelope and I posted this idea to him. I didn't get the answer, but I hope he will give me a call. <laughs> and that we both will build the mill that is invisible. And for years now, I think I'm a magician with things like technology, making my prototypes like you see here. But I'm also aware of this thing. There is something coming up. And guys, come on, work with me about this thing. Our ability to engage with technology. That technology is not taking over our emotions. Our human being way we are created. So please, after this TED talk, I stay here. Try to help me in co-creation. Try to help me in making and are building the right before we build it right. You know all prototyping, so let's do that together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nick Malfis. Thank you.